Hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is June 30th, 2017. And uh, we're going to take a look back at last week's uh, eBay auction results and uh, take a look at a few other things that have been going on. And a uh, th pretty interesting week. Uh, we did two videos yesterday. We'll go over them in a minute uh, as we get toward the end. All right, and uh, here is... Uh, there's last week's uh, newsletter. There's some pretty interesting things on there, and they did quite well. And we're going to start with this thing right here. Um, this was a pot that uh, someone put up. They're not regular uh, sellers of Asian art. It was a rather nice 18th century uh, relief worked uh, uh, jar. It was a big jar with uh, iron red dragons on it and a nice blue and white decoration. It was quite a thing. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. As you can see, it had a crack in it, but it's clearly an 18th century pot. Uh, very unusual. And uh, it did well, even with the hairline in the bottom. Uh, it did quite well, and even with the wear. It brought $1,576. Uh, the seller is a pretty new seller. I don't know who it is. They only got six feedbacks, and they came up with this. And they, uh, they were off by a century on the age, but that's okay. It was a nice piece, and uh, I hope you guys took a look at it. Um, I think it should have brought more. And then what was this? This was a, the, that rather nice flambe glazed uh, pot, very well-known type. It had a, uh, an apocryphal uh, uh, mark on the bottom of the Kung Shi period, but it's, uh, it's, I don't think it was Kung Shi pretty clearly, but it was a nice looking piece, probably uh, mid to late 18th century. Very good color though, great color. And uh, a lot of bidders out there seem to like this a whole lot. It did very well. It brought $6,766. Good looking uh, piece of porcelain. This is a, a fairly new seller. Richwood Fine Art is his name, and uh, he's got some uh, good things. He's got a few mistakes, too, so be careful. Um, he's got a few things that he thinks are older than they are, but um, that's okay. And then there was this. This was nice. This was a nice Tong Chi uh, multi-sided bowl with the, uh, these uh, flowering uh, rosettes panels all around it. You see that same pattern used on big vases fairly often, and they included a picture of the bottom of the mark. Here's the base of it. Uh, nice looking piece and did pretty well. It brought uh, $545. Uh, not a huge amount. It was a pretty good buy, I think. Miguelary had that. And this was also something from Richwood Fine Arts. This was a Yong Chen style. It even had a Yong Chen mark on it. It's obviously not Yong Chen. It's probably 18th or 19th century. Uh, but nice quality. Very good quality all the way around. I think it had a hairline in it somewhere. But good coloring and nice soft, um, you know, uh, uh, that uh, clear de lune blue uh, glaze and uh, did well it brought a thousand twenty five dollars okay uh, that was a, we had that in the newsletter I thought it was very pretty and uh, then there was this this nice uh, export bowl but done in the chi very much in the Chinese taste uh, quite attractive had a nice interior to it good looking base uh, nice you know mid late 18th century uh, cut corner bowl they call them sometimes but very much Chinese taste and uh, he had another bowl up too that was quite similar. And uh, this one brought $602. I don't think that was an overspend at all. Uh, I think that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good purchase. And uh, then there was this. This was one of the bargains of the week and uh, I got a message from somebody who bought this. Uh, they found it on the newsletter. Nice looking uh, 18, uh, 1770s guglet uh, in Famille Rose. Good looking export bottle. Uh, very uh, typical of the period is the bottom. Nice shot of the foot rim on the side. And it went very reasonably, $215. The guy snagged it. Um, he went in, uh, as I suggested, leave a bid. You never know. He left a bid and he got this for a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, I think it went for about um, a third of what, what they often bring. You got a great buy. And uh, then there was this. This was a, a nice Yixing teapot that I talked about last week. I like the color of it and I like the decoration and the uh, seals and signatures and whatnot on it. But a nice example, a nice warm color. And uh, I think somebody got a fairly good buy on this. They don't think they overspent, but nice looking piece. Um, went for $415. Um, a good looking, good looking little pot. Nothing to complain about there. And uh, then we get over to uh, the next item, which was this. This was a rather nice Kung Shi or late Ming uh, plate. This was one of those, probably one of the bargains of the week. A nice looking dish, about eight inches in diameter, eight or nine inches. Here's the bottom of it. Pretty classic uh, foot rim for a, a piece of Kung Shi. There it is. And uh, here's a detail of it. It went really reasonably. 
look at this, forty-four dollars. All right, forty-four dollars, and I put it on there. I was surprised it, it didn't bring a little more than that. I thought it would bring a, you know, one hundred and fifty to two hundred. So I think that was a terrific buy, very reasonable, and it's done sort of in the pat pattern that some um, some of the old Wan Lee pieces were done. Uh, so it made it sort of an interesting piece with a nice landscape scene. And the, I think this was the same seller had this up, this rather nice Kung Shi plate. You know, the brown dressing on the rim, nice with a sort of classic uh, flower basket in the center uh, with uh, uh, flowers and uh, willow trees going around the outside, peony blossoms and so forth. It was in good shape. There was n no problems with it. It wasn't damaged. And uh, again, somebody got a wonderful buy on it, uh, $190. I think that was a good purchase, good looking, a good looking piece. I don't think it was Chin Lung. I think it was probably Kung Shi. That's just my opinion. And uh, then there was this Wutsai plate, a uh, nice looking piece of Wutsai, late, uh, late 17th century, good decoration. And uh, it went also, it also went quite reasonably. And it even had a molded rim, if you notice, it had a slight a bit of shaping to the rim, which is sort of a nice feature. And uh, a little bit of script over here on the side, um, in case you missed that. And uh, it went for uh, just $116, okay? Uh, very, very uh, good buy for that. Uh, there are some good buys on here lately. And then there was this nice looking Kung Shi overglazed blue and enamel uh, dish. Uh, there wasn't any underglazed blue on it, good looking piece. Here's a shot of the side of it. A little roughness on the foot, which is fairly typical. Uh, there's a detail of it, good looking piece. This brought a little more money. This one did fairly well. This was an older Kung Shi piece. And uh, it brought uh, $677. Uh, done with that sort of nice Wutsai palette. And uh, moving along to this, the Celadon. There were a couple of good Celadons up uh, this last week. This is one of them. I like the uh, lotus uh, leaf uh, trim to the interior of this. Rather unusual. And a uh, nice looking bottom of it, on it. Uh, pretty typical uh, base for a late, uh, mid, mid to late Ming bowl. Had some dirt in the cracks, which is nothing. You can actually take those out if you have a, a bit of hydrogen peroxide around the house, that uh, commercial grade stuff will often lift this right out. And uh, this one for $729, I, I think that was a fairly reasonable uh, thing. Uh, he said it was 17th or 18th century, I don't, ag I don't agree, I think it's a, it was a good bit older than that. Maybe that helped keep the price down. And then well, there's this pair of panels, this is a good looking pair of silk panels, uh, beautifully done, uh, nice soft colors, 19th century no doubt, and uh, they did pretty well. They brought, uh, here, here we have, let's see here, the Kesey's brought uh, $2,000 for the pair, uh, but they were in good condition, and uh, uh, finding Kesey panels that are in good condition, that don't have rips or aren't rotted in the corners uh, is, is a bit of a challenge these days, especially for a pair. And uh, then we had this, the rather nice uh, uh, Chinese export teapot with underglazed blue, uh, had a little restoration to the lid, uh, from what I remember, but not bad. And uh, this went for a very reasonable price. This, 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 I thought this was a great buy. $160. Nice looking export teapot. I'm not sure if the lid kept it down or what. The little repair to the lid, uh, or it just made people nervous enough that somebody got a steal on it. Uh, this, these usually, this teapot and this style, they usually sell for uh, $450 to $650. So that was a that was a good purchase, and this nice looking hot water plate fits you, uh, Chinese export late uh, late 18th century uh, uh, example in beautiful condition. And this is this is one of those uh, higher end, higher quality export pieces uh, with a monogram in the center, as you can see in the, in, in the in the underglaze. So this was obviously a custom order piece, and uh, did did uh, pretty well. Brought three hundred and five dollars but it's nowhere near what they used to bring. That's the thing that's interesting about this. These Chinese export pieces have, have slid down in value in the last uh, five years, uh, six years, uh, or, or they have, certainly haven't kept up at all. But it seems to be that uh, you can buy these examples now for a lot less than they were uh, 10 or 15 years ago. That used to be, uh, I remember we ran live auctions. We used to get uh, five to $700 for one of these. Not anymore. And this nice uh, quail pattern, uh, done sort of in the Japanese manner, but it's Chinese. Nice looking uh, teapot, simple, simply decorated with some good gilding still on it. 
it was all in all in very nice condition and it was a good form nice classical 18th century shape and uh, it went through for uh, 455 dollars there you go that that was a good price for that they didn't overpay and a uh, nice looking thing and then there was this jewelry this was uh, uh, this fellow had, had gets very good Chinese jewelry from from time to time and this was a set obviously it came in a presentation box probably done in the 1920s to the early 1940s it's Chinese with the, all the semi-precious stones in it good-looking uh, good-looking stuff here very elegant um, very well made uh, silvered uh, silver and gilt, you know, over the filigree with these cash coin, these cash symbols running down, forming the chain, and uh, did pretty well. It brought $3,600. That was 77 Pud had that, and uh, uh, well deserved. A good piece of Chinese jewelry and a complete set, no less. And uh, then um, uh, Mark Wahlberg had this up, uh, this rather nice flambe glaze vase, uh, nicely colored. Good looking foot on it, uh, very pretty color. I love the color of this, starting out with the white mouth and going down, I liked it, it was nice. And uh, it did pretty well, it brought $515, it was about seven inches tall. And uh, I think he's right on that 18th or 19th century, kind of hard to tell sometimes, but a good looking uh, example. And then there was this, this barb rim celadon. Had a bit of wear in the center, as you can see here, these often do but it's of a better quality uh, than the typical Celadon. It's got the nice freehand drawing in the Cavetto, uh, nicely uh, shaped outer rim with this uh, honeycomb pattern in the middle, uh, very typical bottom. There's a classic uh, Ming foot from the, you know, the uh, early 16th century, late 15th century, very good quality. And uh, it did pretty well, it brought $1,830. Had it not had the wear in the middle, it probably would have been double that. Uh, the wear uh, takes off quite a bit on the value of these because these, these big Ming Celadons were used. Some of them are used almost every day. Um, they, were, they were sort of everyday big serving pieces. And then we're getting down to the end here. There was this very pretty, very, very pretty pair of um, uh, Chinese export low-brimmed uh, serving platters. Beautiful Famil Rose color on them. I like the, uh, the highlighting of this, uh, uh, this sort of softer blue um, in these cartouches running around the rim. Uh, very uh, typical backs to them, uh, you know, late, late 1700s, uh, possibly early 1800s. Sometimes they did them still then, but these went for nothing, $129. And they're a beautiful pair of porcelains, and they were quite lovely. And uh, they were six inches long each, and I think that was a very nice buy. All right, and that's that's it looking back for the week. But I wanted to mention uh, yesterday uh, we put up a couple of more videos. One of them was covering the Arts of Asia sale that Christie's did. It's right here. Uh, nice nice auction. They had some great things. They had some things from a single owner uh, a French collection that was formed was formed in the 1920s and uh, through the 1950s. It was beautiful things, and Tijan had a rather nice sale. They had a, they had a terrific uh, uh, Dolly Kingdom uh, bronze that went through the roof, uh, which were very, very rare. And then we did a last video yesterday on the two Sotheby's sales that took place on the 22nd of June. Um, one of them was about uh, from a, a jade collection. The catalog's here on the, on the site. This is our site, and uh, you can go and flip through it if you want. There's some spectacular quality jades. And then they had their regular Arts of Asia sale, which also had some terrific things in it. And they had quite a few bronzes. And they had some oddball things that didn't sell, including a, uh, a very, very good uh, bronze zoon. But uh, it is, I think there's a reason why that didn't sell. And you can watch the video and hear what I think of it. But at any rate, that's it. Uh, thanks for visiting. If you're uh, not uh, subscribing here yet on YouTube with us, please do. And if, if you don't get the weekly newsletter from bitamount.com, pop over there. Uh, Go to the newsletter page uh, at the top right up here. You just you click on this newsletter catalog page, and uh, it'll bring you here, and you just sign up and uh, get this every week. All right. Thanks so much, and uh, have a great Fourth of July weekend, everybody. Have a good weekend. See you all next week. Bye-bye.